What's good, people? Welcome back to the channel, Said Mac of uh, Music Tech Works. And so, I was busting out some tracks the other day, and I said, okay, let me go ahead and start getting these tracks situated. You know, go ahead and throw them in the catalog and get them ready for whatever, shopping to artists, uh, sync music, or whatnot. So, I had uh, a couple of tracks that I had did, maybe it was about three or four tracks that I had did while um, sitting in the barbershop. I might have been at the bookstore or something um chilling or whatever i had the npc live and i made some beats and i uh i had my headphones i think yeah i had my headphones on me and even though you know the speaker's there but i don't want to stir people but sometimes people will come up and say yo let me hear that but with the npc live you can just turn the speaker on and let people hear but i got these two tracks um there's three tracks i'm gonna go ahead and open them up and show you and I do this little exercise called, you know, how many beats can I make in 10 minutes? You know, I came up with three at this time and then come to find out two of the tracks actually go together. So I said, you know what, let me just uh, go ahead and make those the same tracks. All right, so right here, um, this track here, Slip Up Alley, let me play it. And it's uh, right here. <laughs> like okay yeah that's cool right there and then when I got to this one called regrets I said those sound like two uh, different sections of the same track I said, you know what? I'm gonna put those two together. So what I did, I uh, exported them out and I dropped them into Pro Tools. And I, what I did, I did put each track on their own uh, individual tracks. So let me go ahead and go to that and show you what I did. And then while playing back and just kind of working on the arrangement, I heard something that I didn't hear before. Okay, so I got the track pulled up in Pro Tools here. And what I did, this is the first beat, and then this is the second beat. And when I played the first beat, I was like, okay, so the first half of that, so let me just play that. So I was like, all right, that's cool right there. Then when I got to the second beat, this is what we got here on the second one. I said, okay, all right. So now I hear it. Uh, I didn't hear it before when I was making the beat, but this 808 is in the, it's, it's wrong. It's definitely wrong. It's in the wrong key. I think I'm like a half of a whole step off. So I said, okay, now let me go back into the MPC and just replay that kick or just transpose it. I said, you know what? This would be a good time to use Sub Lab while I'm in Pro Tools because I said, you know what? It, then it may just do something different here. So what I did, Let's mute that track there. Okay. And then this is my sub lab track. So you have the original sub lab. And then you have sub lab XL, which is their, uh, their latest version. The last time I checked. Okay. So here's sub lab. All right. Then you have sub lab XL. And to be honest, I haven't even scratched the surface of sub lab. But um, one of my people, shout out to uh, Toby Meeks over there at uh, Funky Girl Productions. She said, yo, sub, you know, she told me about sub app XL and uh, you know, they got a nice deal on it right now. So I went on over and uh, 
got it. Okay, so I played around with it a little bit, but I, I've been so stuck on Sublab, I haven't even really went that deep into Sublab uh, XL. I was about to say Sublab 2, but Sublab XL. So I replaced, I opened up an instrument track in Pro Tools, and yeah, you can make beats in Pro Tools. Uh, there aren't many that do compared to some of a lot of the other dolls, but yeah, it's very capable, especially over the last couple of years. But I said, let me just open it up in Pro Tools and just redo this part. So if I own the track. Uh, let me show the, I'm actually, uh, go here. Down the off the one on the keyboard. I'm using the uh, MPK. So instead of this kick here, which was off. Sounds decent, but let's go. Mute it and then let's play this one. All right, so that's the kick that we did. So I went on here to do it. I said, you know what, this would be a good time to showcase this. So when I go back up to my first part of the track, um, what I did, I just copy that part out throughout the track. You can also uh, render the track. I me just take all these and make it one. And then I can render it down and just make it one piece or uh, drop it down to audio. Just make it one long piece of audio. So that was one of the new things that Pro Tools, uh, you know, that they hooked up. So. So, after I consolidate that, just made it one long MIDI file here, okay? Then I'm gonna right click on the name of the track here, and then I'm gonna go to commit, all right? Once you go to commit, and I have that track selected, just click okay. And you can see here, Now, I could have kept it in MIDI, but, you know, I can just do more with audio. All right, so let's uh, make sure we got everything from the video. So we got that in there. So I said, you know what? Let me think about doing the same thing to the first part of the track. Okay, so here's the 808 for that for this sequence here. Sounds pretty good. Now, I do like this kick, but it just, when it gets to this part of the song, it just kind of hits a little bit harder. I could do all kind of little mixing tricks and all that to kind of get them close, but the thing to remember about uh, Sub, Sub Lab, the Sub Lab XL is that it is an, an actual synthesizer, okay, that uh, manipulates waveforms. So, I actually got a little bit more control uh, as far as shaping the sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
open up sub lab this time let's do sub lab xl i haven't even gotten too deep into it yet but let's go ahead and create a new track shift command in to create a new track and then we're going to choose instrument track then make sure i click create this time okay then the track creates uh right after the track that's highlighted all right and then i'm gonna go you gotta arm it to hear whatever instrument you put on here okay and let's go with uh instruments yeah i'm doing my 808s in stereo right now um it's just a, one of the things that you can experiment with and you just decide on what you know what how does it sound to you you know but uh many times i break my 808 down i split it into mono tracks into a mono and then that way i just got uh, a nice mono 808 but it just depends on the song the type of song okay yeah so as you can see i got many instruments here but we're gonna go to sub lab Okay, so there's XL. All right, I'm open up sub lab XL. Okay. All right, so this sub lab XL. That's pretty beefy off the back right there. But of course, just go through the presets right here. You got tons and tons and tons of. Let's listen to our beat and see what we got here. This 808 has a uh, palmetto on it, or it's light. Depending on how you play it. All right, so let's mute the audio track. Let me just play along with it. Good thing about it is that you can record the MIDI part and you can always go back and change the sound. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna record the pattern and then I will um, just kind of cycle through the sounds until I find something that I like. Or I could just use the uh, original sub lab that I use, but it's two different, it's supposed to be two different parts of the song. So let's, let's just try to do something different here. I'm gonna use a different 808 than what I used on the, the uh, on the No Regrets sequence. This is the uh, Slip Up Alley sequence right here. So let's just do a different bass. So what I do, I record the sequence with that one, and then I will uh, just kind of cycle through the sounds while they play. But I actually like that one. latex actually. So in Pro Tools, I do need a click track to do my count off. And let's go to track, create clip track. All right. Yeah. I got up here, I got my count in set for two bars. If I go to just show the transport bar here, you can see it set up a little bit better screen all right so i got this set up let's just change this to one bar double click on that perimeter and change it to one bar all right okay all right I'll show you the MIDI controller that I'm using for this one. 
I'm actually using the uh, Kai MPK Mini, the plus joint. All right, so I'm using the uh, MPK, uh, the Mini Plus, all right, 37 keys, a set, or you can put it in different uh, program modes to actually lock up to whatever software you're using. Right now, they got, I do have it in uh, MPC mode, but that's based on what I use. I use this, I can use this MIDI controller with the MPC software, and it uh, it just locks up, even including the note repeat button, which is very important. and a lot of the templates have been uh, already made so far as far as using uh, different keyboards with the NPC software, but I'm using the, uh, I'm using this one for now. So, all right, so let's go ahead and try it here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and record that part. I gotta remember my pattern here. So I'm done there with that for now. So let's just see what we got here. Here's my pattern. And yes, Pro Tools does have a MIDI editor and whatnot, so we can go ahead and listen to it. But I'm gonna go ahead, I didn't do input quantizing. I'm going to just quantize this after the fact. Let's see how close I got. All right, and I missed that first note. So I'm gonna take that first note and just copy it. It is pretty good all the way through here, like full level basically. All right, so now let's go and quantize that. So you go to events, event operations, quantize. Okay, then the quantize function, uh, dialog screen pulls up. And then from here, I can choose how I want to do this. Okay, so not only do I got the standard. Uh, quantize values also have different templates and, and of course you know you know what i use okay so it's the npc but let's just play around with it okay so there's a couple of ways you can quantize in pro tools you can do it this way or you can do it in real time so let me show my real time properties here All right, so here's the quantize right here for real time properties. Okay, so I can go here and now I can see my settings. I'm just gonna use standard eighth note right here. Okay. So 
that went into the next sequence. I'm gonna highlight that so we just salute that part. Let's try uh, using a different quantize setting. And remember, this is in real time, so it's not actually locking it down. Uh, it just works in uh, logic works the same way. You can change the quantize field live. So I'm gonna go to MPC. You got logic style grooves, um, which are pretty cool right here as well. Cubase style grooves. But let's just go to MPC and let's go to 51%. It says 16th swing. Okay, all right, so I like that quantized setting. Let's keep that. And now let's go through some different sounds from Sublab. Just highlight that. So it'll loop. All right, so remember we got latex, because I actually like this 808. Another thing is like, how does it transition into the, into the other 808? But let's just find something that we like first and then decide from there. I'm not tweaking anything, but every now and then I might try some because I, I actually like this one. I can make it longer. See all these different options we got here. That's why I hadn't made it all the way through this yet. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go back to latex. Okay, I'm gonna make that a favorite. Right. So these are base, basically your oscillators. You can add. Uh, looks like you have three here. One is the actual sample. Okay, then you have the the uh, actual synth, and here's a another. Um, a wave oscillator here basically just to add some things to it and at this point i'm not going too deep into the um synthesis and because right now right i'm just starting off playing sounds and later on i will go a little bit deeper into shaping your sounds and just making sounds from scratch uh, but for right now, we're just uh, having fun and just listening to the sounds that are already here with minor tweaking. Right now, we're just going through uh, just different presets, basically. So I do actually like this kick right here. And let's play with it a little bit. As you can see, there are literally a hundred things you can do to shape your sounds and create your own 808s. And I have nothing against the, the sound packs and the, the 808 kits. You know, every other week there's a, another 808 kit. And one thing I do want to make clear is that, you know, a lot of people say, a lot of people say 808, you know, it's really a bass tone, but you know, we'll call it 808 because that's what it is. Uh, the 808, Actually, it's a drum machine by Roland, for those who don't know, that uh, was very popular uh, back in the day. Still is popular today, the actual drum machine. Jimmy Jay and Terry Lewis, they used it and just kind of revolutionized uh, R&B. Uh, Dr. Dre, back in those days, they uh, Gangsta Gangsta, if you listen to that, that's uh, 808 playing. And, uh, you know, he had the SP-1200 too as well, but that 808 did something special. But Today, you know, we're all about the trap, the trap soul, the 808, the beat. Uh, anybody remember DJ Magic Mike? Uh, those were some, yeah, go back and listen to DJ Magic Mike. 
those were some real 808s they used those are hardware drum machines back in those days okay and but you have several options now this plug-in at the time i think i paid like 50 bucks for it it was on sale so not only do you get tons and tons and tons of presets okay you can create and save your own all right and and really to be honest i think that's what a lot of, a lot of cats are doing they're creating these 808s and they're selling them selling them as sample packs which is you know that's fine if that's what you do that's cool but you can get your own here and just learn how to dig and then just create an 808 that nobody else is using you know um in this game with the music game is you know let's copy the the last hit you know even the people at the record labels a lot of times oh i need something that sounds like that something that sounds like that you know we heard a whole lot of uh corny um new jack swing tracks in the 90s of everybody trying to copy teddy riley so it was only a few that did it well you know um but you know we try to make music that sound like what's what's so-called popping on the radio and everything but you end up sounding like everybody else without being original and creative but here with this plug in here and we are in xl and the sub lab the first sub lab has plenty of options as well too so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and commit this midi track here and then i'm gonna copy it out and then i'm pretty much just got to mix this track down and then i'll be this one will be ready to go um i'm revamping my website as far as uh sedmacbeats.com and a lot of these tracks that i'm making here some of them go there a lot of them don't because i do have a situation but um they usually go there until uh you know i'm not sitting around waiting on anybody to pick my tracks so it is a uh, open market and anybody that want beats you know they can just go there and my website is like by itself it's not on a platform where there are like a thousand other producers and i did that on purpose and i'll probably you know just to get some leads to my site uh go ahead and do a b stars page and i do have a sound click but i hadn't used that thing in years uh but yeah uh what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and i'll just make it all one file matter, matter of fact let's just go here and let's right click that and we're gonna choose commit all right and then we're gonna click okay so yeah pro tools is more than just tape and it's probably can't remember the guy if i think of his name I'll, I'll post it right here but he all he does he just makes beats in pro tools that's it so let's just see what we got here here's my audio render down bounce down all right so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna have like other mixing videos and stuff i'm gonna go ahead and put just a little quick uh level mix on this just so when the transition happens everything is kind of on the same uh you know on the same page
basically what I'm doing is just taking a little bit of the, the uh, low end out of the regular kick so it won't clash with this 808 
So I'm, I'm kind of tempted to add like a couple more sounds during this part, but sometimes you gotta just be like, you know what? Let's leave room for the artists. You know, you can't put like 30 different sounds in there then expect the artist to jump on the record. So if uh, somebody really likes this track and they really want me to add something to it, I'll do it then. But right now I'm gonna leave it open because uh, you know, who knows? This could be a, 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 a track for a scene or, you know, a sync track. Who knows? You know, you never know where the track may end up at. But I'm just going to leave this open for now. But it would be kind of act as my verse. And then uh, I just do like a little couple of breaks at the end here before it goes back into it. Because this part right here is going to be the. That's going to be the main chorus. And then when it breaks down. create a little break right there change my increments to quarter notes right here my grid to quarter notes and I can come in here I just take these out just leave the eight or eight in the Song. All right, so with the edit modes and Pro Tools, uh, once I, I got a Pro Tools one on one situation coming up that I'm going to be teaching from scratch, but here are your edit modes right here. Shuffle mode, spot, slip, and grid. The only ones right now to focus on is slip. Slip just allows you to move around freely when making selections and editing. Grid locks to the grid. You know, um, all dogs have this function, okay? So, and I'll just be honest, when going to work at, um, I'm gonna say larger commercial situations or Let's just, you know, let's just say it. Major record labels, major uh, artists, major recording studios. They have Pro Tools. Uh, some of them, you know, you have the option to work with Logic and everything, but, or different dolls, but Pro Tools is what you're gonna see, um, you know, mainly in a lot of major studios. So if you are an engineer and you're about to spend this money to go to school, or you just wanna learn, what make yourself valuable as an engineer, I would suggest to learn Pro Tools, okay? Still learn Studio One, still learn Logic, still make those your personal go-tos, but you would need to be able to walk into a studio and say, yes, I can operate Pro Tools, okay? All right, so let's just make that clear. At the same time, a major artist, uh, I was dealing with working with his artists and even his stuff, They he used Logic on everything like um his producer would make the beat in logic and record the song do everything in logic but it got transferred over to pro tools for mixing and uh you know it don't have to stay in and it doesn't have to you don't have to do that it just in the industry is just so you know everybody think oh it got to be in pro tools at the end of the day so it does not but <laughs> learn Pro Tools, you know, you know, want to be in a situation where, hey, can you record me? You know, or you, you were in one of those studios that all they got is Pro Tools. But I'm telling you that most of these studios in the uh, in the, the main recording, the, let's say the commercial recording, recording uh, studios and deal with major labels, um, movie houses. They all use Pro Tools and, you know, 
I can go farther deeper in that. I'll, I'll talk about that once I uh, release my Pro Tools Learning Series. But um, they use Pro Tools, and you as an engineer should just learn how to use Pro Tools. Like it's 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 a must to me. You know, uh, things change. Yeah, Reaper is dope. Yeah, Reaper is nice. Like especially for the price, one time deal, and you good. You know, um, free updates. Reaper is nice. You can even make it look like Pro Tools or whatever doll you want it to look like. Logic, of course, is a beast. I love Logic. I like making beats in Logic. I rarely make beats in pro tools but it's something that i've been getting more into because it's just it's it pro tools is, it is all in one so you can do everything in pro tools and the good thing about it is that it's probably going to end up in pro tools anyway if it goes you know to a uh, if you get a placement with a major artist or the song gets picked up by a major artist it more than likely is going to end up in pro tools anyway um billy ellis am i saying my name right recorded everything they did everything in logic i know their first project at least it, it was from logic did he end up in pro tools at the end of the day i'm not sure but they started everything was in logic okay all right and those are my thoughts on that but you know studio one is nice too like just you know how does how do these programs stack up the pro tools they're probably they're like the feature pack they they do more than what pro tools do but still Pro Tools is what you at least need to know. You don't have to use it all the time, like as far as your personal, but at least know the basics, know how to record, know how to do editing. Um, I'm probably, well, I want to toot my own horn, but I know I know Pro Tools very well. I'm probably one of the best editors, especially in the Atlanta area. But uh, just learn how to learn Pro Tools. If you want to be an engineer, if you want to get your foot in the door, a lot of times it's not getting your foot in the door as oh i make beats a lot of times you get in your foot in the door because you know how to engineer can you record somebody yeah yeah i can record i'll do it and they say you know building relationships and now you're able to you know work because oh yeah he's he's dope with pro tools that's what you know artists i love my artists that's a whole nother video but artists oh yeah use pro tools yeah that's it you know like my studio on college park when we um when i had it and everything we were using cakewalk sonar with a pc to start off probably bring it in in studio time about i don't know anywhere from two to three hundred dollars a week keep in mind the building was 1500 by itself a month okay so the inbox came out i got that inbox everything like triple so because we said we got pro tools and artists you know some of them don't care but at the end of the day they, they it feels professional when you uh you know you say you work with pro tools i'm a pro tools engineer i actually know pro tools i know logic i know studio one my new favorite is luna by universal audio and i know cubase i know several dolls i know how to record in all of them and kind of equal on the editing but i'm just a little bit faster in pro tools and pro tools just got some things uh in it that the other dogs don't have but you can make your dogs behave like pro tools so if you know pro tools you know the rest of them so let me get off my rant about pro tools so i got everything um just got like a little blend mix here and that's just my example of using sub lab i'll be making more videos on uh sub lab and uh yeah so let's just play from that transition and then we'll be good to go
so I'll leave it open for now. I still hear some other stuff, but I don't want to overproduce produce it. Like I said before, once the vocals get on there, it's going to sound full anyway. Uh, if it ends up being an instrumental or a track for sync, I will probably add some things in the, on that uh, verse part to just kind of, you know, bring it out a little bit more, maybe the second time when it comes in. And um, yeah, that's what we hit, but that's Sub Lab and Sub Lab XL, an introduction to it. But um, yeah, we'll get more into that later, but thank you for watching and please like, share and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next one. All right.